You know when things are better than the first edition, but only a little better and kind of so-so in some ways, but overall a general improvement? Yeah? Well, that's the HTC One M8. So the HTC One M8 came out March 25th to much fanfare. It was leaked like crazy before that because its predecessor, the M7, was so well liked. We've actually already done a video on this phone, but that was kind of more of an unboxing and overview. Now we've had a chance to use it for about a month, and all of us have kind of played around with it, so we're gonna give you our overall impressions and what we really think of the HTC One. First off the specs, we got a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 801 processor, an Adreno 330 GPU, two gigabytes of RAM. There's a 16 gigabyte and 32 gigabyte option for storage. Plus, this thing actually has a micro SD slot for up to 128 gigabytes of memory. It's got LTE support, a rear-facing camera that's four megapixels, and a five megapixel front-facing camera. That's very interesting, but we'll get to that. Five inch 1080p screen on this guy, 2600 milliamp hour battery, and it's got Android 4.4 KitKat with HTC Sense 6. Okay, starting with the exterior of the phone, I really like what HTC does with their overall design for their phones. Uh, it's an all metal enclosure, while Samsung, they keep going for that fake leather thing with the Galaxy S5 and whatnot. I, I'm just not a fan of that. HTC does not cut any corners and makes the entire exterior metal, which is awesome. And it really feels like a premium phone. Um, it's actually brushed metal, so it's fingerprint resistant as well. On the front are these boom sound speakers and everyone keeps talking about them because they really are awesome. They pump out some serious volume and you even get stereo effects because they're on either side of the screen and it's, it just makes perfect sense. Like, I just don't understand why every phone doesn't have that. Every other phone maker, if you're watching this video, you probably aren't, but do this, please. Uh, the volume buttons on the side are pretty standard. They're flush with the uh, side of the phone, and on the bottom we have micro USB port, which is slightly offset to the side for some reason, right next to the headphone jack. Now this phone is very tall, partly because of those awesome speakers, which unfortunately makes it kind of hard to hold and do other things with if you're trying to reach, you know, different parts of the screen and stuff. Uh, the power button is still on top, and it's kind of hard to reach, you know, without kind of shifting your grip on the phone like that. So luckily, there's a number of things that HTC has made it easy to do from sleep mode for when the uh, display is actually off. So you can double tap the screen to wake the phone. Uh, that doesn't actually unlock it, it just kind of uh, wakes the screen up and you can double tap again to turn the display off uh, Once you actually unlock it double tapping won't do anything. So that's just kind of part of the lock screen thing uh, You can swipe from the right to the left to go to your home screen from uh, wherever you wherever you are Whatever it doesn't matter what you were doing swipe from the left to the right to go to Blink Feed, which is their social media conglomerator type thing. We'll talk about that later. So you can swipe up from the bottom and that'll go to whatever app you were in when you locked it. And you can swipe down from the top to activate voice commands. Call Jack. What's actually doing it? Hello. Hey Jack. Hey, what's going on? You're, you're a butthead. Goodbye. Okay, and with all those features, you may never actually need to touch the power button except when you actually want to lock the phone. Now speaking of swiping, the M8 has a beautiful five inch 1080p screen with Gorilla Glass 3, so it, it will endure some punishment. So on to actual usage. The battery life is great on the one. Uh, for normal usage, just texting and calling, we got two to three days of battery life, so that's really good. For heavy usage, like gaming and streaming video and stuff like that, we got one and a half days, so still really great. With the quad core Snapdragon 801 processor that's in this thing, things are indeed snappy. <laughs> Snapdragon, snappy, and responsive. Uh, we did not experience a slowdown once, and we were able to listen to music, upload photos, and browse the internet all at once quite comfortably. The One uses HTC's Sense version of Android, which as far as Android skins go, is not the worst. Wheels has used a Nexus device for a long time, so having to deal with all that extra stuff uh, built into the phone, it, it wasn't fun for him. Now I have an LG Optimus G, that has its own skin on there on top of Android, so I'm kind of used to the modifications that manufacturers put on there. Now the biggest feature, immediately obvious when you start using the HTC One, is Blink Feed, 
which is kind of their social media conglomerator thing where they take Facebook and Google and Twitter and it's all available in one place. And this is taken up by the spot that usually is occupied by Google Now on other Android phones and Nexus devices. So that's I, I think that's why Wheels found it kind of annoying. You can still access Google Now from, by swiping up from the bottom there. Uh, so that's still there, so that's nice. I love Google Now. I found Blink Feed to be largely I don't know, I didn't really use it because the UI is kind of weird, it's kind of confusing, and I don't use social media a ton. You can actually ask Jack about that, eh, Jack? He hates Twitter. I hate, okay, I don't hate Twitter. I just don't tweet very much. There's a cool feature as part of the phone where you can mute the phone by flipping it over, which is kind of nice. And there's a built-in TV app that lets you use your phone as a remote for TV or for an HTPC that you hook it up to. HTC also, of course, has their own apps built in for things like email, calendar, and music. But other than mostly cosmetic changes, it's pretty close to stock Android. But if you really need stock Android on this phone, there is also the Google Play version, which is available on Google Play. So on to the HTC One's camera. It's As I said, it's kind of confusing that there's a four megapixel on the back and a five megapixel on the front, you know, compared to the eight and 12 and 16 megapixel cameras that are on the back of a lot of other high-end flagship Android phones. But this phone again uses HTC's Ultra Pixel technology that uh, debuted with the M7. So don't worry, they're Ultra Pixels. And that is accompanied this time by a two megapixel depth of field sensor as part of their duo camera system, which is supposed to analyze the distance and position of elements in a photo, allowing you to retroactively change the focus point for a bokeh type effect add background and foreground effects, and it also enables a pseudo 3D mode tied to the gyroscope inside the phone. Now these features are kind of cool, and the bokeh effect is is cool to see, it, it works. But just be aware that what they amount to is a gimmick. If you're looking for uh, a really good Android camera that you want to show off your skills with, this might not be the one for you. The camera shoots 1080p video, but unfortunately HTC also removed optical image stabilization for some reason. So that, I don't know why you would do that, that sucks. Colors and exposure can also kind of be wonky on the one. So if the camera is the most important part of the phone to you on an Android phone, you might wanna look at another device. Now we also got to test the one with the dot view case made by HTC, it's a first party accessory. And this thing has gotten some attention for its power saving abilities. Basically, you can do a number of things using minimal screen power. Uh, the front flap is held on by magnets, and basically it only displays the pixels it needs to. So you can double tap on the screen to bring up the time and weather, and if you have a notification, it will tell you what kind of notification it is, a message or a voicemail, etc. You can also answer and decline calls by swiping up or down on the case and drag down from the top to activate voice commands just like you can do without the case. Uh, now those voice commands, I didn't mention this earlier, but they're not Google's voice recognition, they're HTC, so it's kind of dodgy sometimes, but it's nice to have that there. Now for all the good things the Dot View case offers, it has a couple major flaws. For one, the front does not stay open. It's sort of an elastic hinge and it just snaps shut if you don't hold it back. Now, if you do try to hold it back, it's very hard to do with one hand. It's, it's got a rounded back on it and it can't really go all the way back and stay there. So together with that and the elastic hinge, it, it, it basically ensures that if you have the dot view case on, you have to use both hands to do anything substantial on the phone. So that's definitely, uh, that kind of confused me and wheels. We were like, why would you do that? That's an engineering bad no-no thing. However, if you're basically using your phone as a smartwatch, you're getting the time, you're answering calls, you're doing some basic voice commands, then this case is awesome. But be aware that you will be using it mostly as a smartwatch and you're missing out on a lot of horsepower. Unless you want to take the case on and off every time. In conclusion, the HTC One M8 is a solid phone. It would not be a bad purchase by any means. It's got amazing metal design, the battery life is solid, it's got innovative lock screen features and the boom sound speakers, I cannot say enough about the boom sound speakers. They are awesome. They're absolutely amazing. And every single phone should have them. It, it makes sense. Do it again, please do it. I personally prefer Sense to other Android skins like Samsung's Touch Wiz and LG's version. I don't know what LG's is called, but I, I like Sense the best. It's pretty close to stock Android, but if you're really into stock Android and you need that stock Android, you can grab the Google Play Edition. Now the camera features are either a plus or a minus depending on what you're looking for. It does take decent photos, 
but it's far from the best Android camera out there. So if you're really looking for a good camera, as I said, there are some better cameras out there. But if you think those features are cool, like the refocusing and such, maybe it's, maybe it's for you, who knows? Now overall, the HTC One M8 is a step up from the M7, not a leap forward. But if you're looking for a flagship Android device, then this is one of the best. Thanks for watching this double take on the second HTC One, guys. And let me know in the comments, do you have an HTC One? Are you thinking of getting one? Are you gonna get a Galaxy S5 or a Nexus? Eh, I don't know, let me know. Like or dislike the video, depending on how you feel. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.